Welcome to yet another edition of the Big Scope interview. On the show today, I've got with some me, me somebody who's going to talk about how many more people are going to get jobs in India, in Industry 4.0. I've got with me Lokesh Pike, who's the Chief of Digital Enterprise at Bosch India. So, what is this hub about, you know, hum about Industry 4.0? people losing jobs last day. What is Industry 4.0? I really want to understand. I Google up, there are so many definitions. Which, what is Industry 4.0? Uh, you really want me to go in depth on give me a give me, give me a couple of lines answer. Give me a very brief <laughs> answer. What comprises of Industry 4.0? From your perspective, from Bosch's perspective. See, Industry 4.0 is way of life going further. For especially who are in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm an auto mobile engineer. Mm -hmm. I've been mm -hmm. in the industry from a decade plus now. I've really liked mm -hmm. and I was curious like mm -hmm. how it happens. Now, okay. how it happens is a curious word for okay. anyone for that matter. When yeah. you get into car, you see how it happens. When you get into components, how it happens. Mm -hmm. So, Industry 4.0 is going to make it more mm -hmm. exciting, mm -hmm. the how part of it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to make it faster, mm -hmm. more agile, mm -hmm. more connected. Mm -hmm. and and you know, the one thing I want to understand, every time I've met uh, uh, you know, uh, folks from uh, your industry, five years before or even a month before, two months before, I'm sure even two years into the future. Everybody uses the word Agile. Hmm. I didn't use it. <laughs> you didn't use the word Agile. I didn't use it. I didn't use it. I, I used so what is it about Agile? I, 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 I used the word hmm. speed. I hmm. used the word flexible. Hmm. Agile is all, again, it's hmm. how you do it. Agile hmm. is hmm. In, in a project management scenario. Agile is like, hmm. can I be more moldable? Hmm. And I hmm. take decisions as it comes. Hmm. I'm not fixated in terms of this is how I want to do. Hmm. I see what's happening hmm. and I change the way I need to do it to hmm. do it faster. That's Agile all about it. And a simple just. Okay. But in okay. a manufacturing, being Agile is little uneasy. Because okay, you, you are, your plans are scheduled, mm -hmm. your processes are fixed, you have a lot of certification you need to do. Mm -hmm. Components are safety critical, you need to follow those certifications. Mm -hmm. And that, as per the certification, you mm -hmm. need to go through a step-by-step mm -hmm. -step process. You mm -hmm. can't eliminate any process. Correct. Correct. So hence, Agile is possible, but Agile as an attitude and a mindset mm -hmm. is required mm -hmm. rather than a process changes in the manufacturing you know, So. Uh, I'll take a step back, you know, you, uh, there are so many other questions that's coming to mind to ask you about Industry 4.0, well, let's just go on in it. But you've been in Bosch for a long time now. Yeah. I mean, personally for you and with respect to the organization, what has changed in the last so many years that you've seen? What has changed? What is the one big thing that you want to point out? This is what we have done the best so far, oh, among the other things. Oh, so many, mm -hmm. many. We are an IoT company. We are not a component company anymore. Mm -hmm. Way back in 2012, mm -hmm. when I was... Uh, taking up uh, way back in 2012 mm -hmm. is when a new CEO mm -hmm. has joined in. Mm -hmm. He came mm -hmm. to India mm -hmm. and we were all wondering how did he get this role? Now we have the answer because he was very clear that he wanted to change that mm -hmm. interface of company to an IoT company. Are we completely there? Not yet, mm -hmm. but we are definitely on the path in a very, very systematic mm -hmm. and very, very mm -hmm. faster way to become an IoT company. We're an IoT company. Mm -hmm. We want all our mm -hmm. components, mm -hmm. whether it's mobility, whether it's our home appliances, mm -hmm. Bosch home appliances, whether yes, the power tools, yes. everything to be connected by 2020. Yes. So, and hence we are an IoT company, not a company. I love company. the way you put it. So, so you know, I'll just stop you there. If you look at IoT, the, like the industry in general, it's I'm, I'm fascinated by the fact that uh, on a on a day-to-day -day basis, even if I look, even if we Google, uh, even if we, uh, if, for example, if we go on Shodan right, right now and see all the connected devices, everything yeah. is an IoT device. Yeah. But I have one query over there. Now, when you say you're an IoT organization, my the problem with IoT is there is no standardization with IoT devices across the world. So isn't that a challenge that you folks face? Hugely. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. It is a challenge for anyone for that matter. Mm -hmm. But for that you need, to, for, for these kind of new technology topics, you need to keep it a little loose mm -hmm. earlier mm -hmm. because you need mm -hmm. to fail fast, fail cheap, Correct. burn your fingers so, so and then you step into exactly. it. Exactly. Also, I'll just button with another question. Is it, there, is there an actual requirement of standardization because, see, there is like, the kind of uh, 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 stuff you you folks produce is there an actual because every, this this uh, component is different from this component. Do you actually is there a requirement because then, yeah. then there will be so many standards across the industry. Yeah, yeah. when you look at mm -hmm. implementation mm -hmm. in a POC stage, it's mm -hmm. fine. I mm -hmm. want to do a small pilot. Mm -hmm. That's all good to be agile, as you mm -hmm. say. No <laughs> standard is okay. Mm -hmm. But when you want to mm -hmm. roll it out horizontally integration mm -hmm. or vertical integration, mm -hmm. that requires a standardization. Mm -hmm. Imagine a mm -hmm. factory with hundreds of mm -hmm. machines mm -hmm. connected. Mm -hmm. 
you can't simply say that I'll do everything one after one the other. After the other yeah. One you can do, perhaps Correct. ten you can do as a pilot. Mm -hmm. You need to roll out for hundred. For that, calls for a standardization. Mm -hmm. Standardization, even the process documentation in terms of, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the way you want to do it, exactly. in terms of software is mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. So standardization is a key, but mm -hmm. it's going to come in. It okay. has started coming in. You need an ecosystem play here, mm -hmm. and that ecosystem requires a machine builder, solution provider, yes. IoT stack, yes. platform yes. player, <laughs> and yes. all together. So. It's it's a happy challenge to have. Lovely. So I will take a couple of steps back. I mean, uh, since we are talking about, we start the interview talking about, uh, in, you know, Industry 4.0. Now, if somebody at the age of 20 to 25 is watching, yeah. just been a fresh graduate, uh, doesn't matter what kind of graduate, where will that he or she fit into uh, an Industry 4.0 vertical, especially oh. from India? One must realize at that particular year, you're at the right time at the right place. <laughs> okay, it's easier said than that. Absolutely, because uh, I, I step back. Yeah. Like it's it's been 14 years that yeah. I've been working. 14 years mm -hmm. ago I was a student, mm -hmm. and I that time 2001, 2002 mm -hmm. when I just graduated mm -hmm. engineering and stepping mm -hmm. into MBA, I decided to go into an MBA because there were no jobs. 2001, you remember a big bubble? Yeah. There were no jobs at all. Yes. No one was ready to go. So hence I decided mm -hmm. like me continue with my mm -hmm. studies and come mm -hmm. back. At least I'll get a better job, and I got it. Mm -hmm. And now you don't have to be worried about. You just need to be focused on what's happening around the world along with your studies, your, mm -hmm. your curriculum mm -hmm. and try to get into these kind of companies like mm -hmm. Bosch or anyone, any startups who are doing IoT, do a little, little bit of work in that particular sphere and you're ready to go. Hence I said you're right, right time at the right place to make mm -hmm. it big in this IoT area. Lovely. So, so today if I ask you, if say, can you name me three skill sets that yeah. you're looking for yeah. from Bosch's perspective? If yeah. I'm Bosch today, uh, I'm looking at these three skill sets. Yeah. Are they in India? They're not there in India. So can you help me understand that? Sure. We, we're looking at in an engineering perspective. Yes. We're looking yes. at someone who can understand the complete platform stack. Mm -hmm. Someone understand okay. how these devices will be controlled to a platform and start playing around. Okay. So the data mm -hmm. analytics mm -hmm. plays a major role. First mm -hmm. is to understand mm -hmm. the complete electronics piece of it. All right. Yes, mm -hmm. the stack computer science piece of it. But those are basics anyway we're going to learn in engineering. Absolutely. Step up, see that overall as a system, there are mm -hmm. multiple layers of a platform. Mm -hmm how that would act. Mm -hmm. Even if you're an electronics engineer, it doesn't make you know, no harm in going and looking at a machine. What does that machine consist of? Mm -hmm. The basic of, in an in a mm -hmm. industrial IoT stack, which I had, I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. A basic is machine. Okay. You connect the machine, mm -hmm. then you see if I can't connect the machine, because mm -hmm. these are legacy machines, mm -hmm. can I add a sensor into it? What kind of a sensor I need to okay. get the data out of it? Okay. Then having collected the mm -hmm. data, how would I start making sense of these data exactly. in your language skills? A data scientist. Yeah, data right. scientist okay. comes in. And then you see how this data is connected to the ERP layer, whether it's SAP mm -hmm. or Oracle, any ERP okay. layer. Okay. Then you see the cloud. So there are six technology stacks in this. Wow. But even if you're an electronics engineer, even if you're a computer science engineer or a mechanical mm -hmm. science engineer, it's better to get this holistic picture. And okay. it is not difficult mm -hmm. to get this holistic mm -hmm. picture. What you need is in curiosity. Mm -hmm. What you need is some, some way of mm -hmm. getting into things and getting into mm -hmm. a possibility of looking mm -hmm. eye to eye rather than reading it on paper. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And this is what you need. Absolutely. So you talked about you know a data scientist, yep. a data analyst. Now, have, do you also collaborate with institutions in here or across North America and Europe where you, know, uh, you help them, you know, structure out a course and say this is the part of the course, this is how a data scientist should look like, this is what a two or three of criteria that he or she should uh, work on. Do you do, you do oh that yes, also in India do. as well as outside? Oh yes, we do. Bosch, uh, and any year we recruit mm. hundreds of mm. fresh engineers. Mm. Mm. It, it could even go to a 500 per year. That's the number we're looking at. And when you look at these kind, what we want to engage, what we want to do is engage the universities very early on, mm -hmm. start influencing their curriculum where when the students come out of it, they're ready for the job. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we have to give them training. Recently, you might have perhaps read in the paper that 94% yes. of yes. engineers are not ready for that. With due respect, I want to question that particular percentage. I see that there are more ready, but you just need to work. And even as an industry, we have the responsibility to work with universities. Mm -hmm. We do that. We have focus close to 20 to 15. It's a very years. critical thing you mentioned because Absolutely. it's easy to sit back on yeah. the chair and Say, but you're not good enough, you can't be yeah, a part of this. You industry. have to be part of that. Mm -hmm. We are part of that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. We have close to 12 to 15 universities, target universities. We call India it. as well as abroad. India. Now, okay. currently, I'm talking Just about India, India okay. for Bosch. Worldwide, okay. we are. I mm -hmm. represent a Bosch R&D mm -hmm. uh, division, mm -hmm. which is 20,000 people, mm -hmm. backbone of Bosch. Mm -hmm. We recruit mm -hmm. a real good 
engineers who want to look beyond beyond what they are really doing. So we influence them from the curriculum itself. We work with them on, on mentorship. We take them on internship, and we do all of those things. Mm -hmm. And this this has been. And you also help them. I mean, you also help the colleges as well as universities. You know, this Certainly. is what the structure of course should be. I mean, has to be. We are on the advisory mm -hmm. boards of few of those core structures. Mm -hmm. Mechatronics, for example, that we were earlier on when we were defining okay. mechatronics. Okay. Now a lot of universities are inviting us to sit on the panel to define okay. IoT structure of what you need to know. Lovely. How do they come in? So this is this has just started. One but it's question take that it. comes to mind: since the time you have graduated out from an engineering school, what has changed? What is one thing that has changed in the curriculum, or change that the industry would have bought on in the curriculum? Oh yeah, that stands out. Uh, no, when I was doing my engineering, I graduated mm -hmm. in two thousand one from mm -hmm. from Hooply, mm -hmm. an over engineer. Uh, we never had a concept of internships. Uh -huh. Internship okay. was like, yeah, you have a one month mm. go and get some certificate. Mm. Now that has changed. Now mm. I, I will be able to get mm. students for six months of internship. Okay. I, I, at Bosch, we get a lot of German students coming and working with us. Mm -hmm. I used to always wonder, why can't I get Indian students working with us okay. for six months? Two okay. months is a little shorter. Mm -hmm. But now I'm happy to note that a lot of universities are releasing them for six months. Also, they're releasing, the, especially the this management is, uh, graduate. In between the first semester yeah, and third yeah. semester. They consider that as a semester at times. They consider it as a subject. Mm -hmm. They come and work. And we are also flexible to mm -hmm. say that you don't have to stay in office for 10 hours. Mm -hmm. Now, time doesn't count, quality of work comes, come and be integrated. And in my team also, when I take interns, I've just, just had some 10 interns working on different spheres from management to engineering. They're part, they have a regular email ID of an employee, they have access to all the documents what we nice. have. They're part of the team nice. building and I also have clear KPIs defined to them. You have to no deliver problem. end of your internship. What's the so median age of your team right now? Oh, currently, Average mine media. is very, ang I, median <laughs> is very, it's cute because I have, I have members at 24 mm -hmm. and I have one of, a couple of team members at 56 age. Okay. So that's a span. And that's okay. required for industry like mm -hmm. You need a domain knowledge where you need to understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. And for that, you certainly need an experience. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and you okay. also need a very agile speed and, and ready to make mm -hmm. fail fast, fail cheap kind of people who are in like 25 Absolutely. to 30. Absolutely. And I have a mix of all that. Absolutely. And that makes me at the right place at the right time, as I said. Well, this is a very well put thing in the internship council. Yeah. Lot of, very few people have put that out right across the media, what has changed actually in the curriculum. You know, the other thing at this point is, uh, uh, I'll just give you an example. Uh, yeah. We were talking to this uh, there's a professor who had come down uh, on one of our shows and he was talking about how you know AI and NLP is very important right now. I said, lovely, all that is great. But my question, Chief, is since you have seen this, you've, you've be seen a very critical transformation in the industry, especially in the sure. IT industry in India, in terms of jobs and kinds of jobs that have come up. Now, tell me something. When we talk about you know terms like Industry 4.2, when we talk about terms like AI, NLP, yeah. a lot of these new terms, even for that matter, let me take three years back, there was this huge talk on oh, cloud computing is the next big thing. I was like, wait, utility computing existing way, way back. So you just term it as cloud. My point is, is the industry creating a sense of fear when they put out words like these, this is the next big thing, this is the, that is the next big, next big thing? Because what also happened, sir, is a lot of colleges came up in India because oh, we need so many engineers, we need so many graduates and this, this, this. A lot of colleges came up. The supply was humongous. Yeah. Today, if I if, if if my ground report stands right, I, I'm, during my reporting days last year, I saw so many colleges in Gurgaon, Haryana, Bel, in Karnataka, in Andhra Pradesh. So many colleges, the supply is so much, yeah. but the demand was this. And then obviously there will be reports coming out, there are no jobs. So how do you, how does the, where, how does the industry balance that then? How does the government industry and bo industry bodies come together and balance that? Sure. See, the first thing first, it's not a fear which is created by industry. Sure. No, it's not at all. Mm -hmm. Because these are revolutions which have people have seen industry 1.2, 2.3. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And this is very specific to the demand of current market. Okay. Mm -hmm. Currently, earlier days, perhaps we were not even alive. If you ask our mm -hmm. grandfather, tough mm -hmm. grandfather, they will tell that the customization was key. You will go and get mm -hmm. customized mm -hmm. clothes for you. Mm -hmm. Now you're also wearing, it's very mm -hmm. customized mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. That is coming back. Mm -hmm. The customers are demanding very high level customization. When I go, mm -hmm. I want to design my car. Mm -hmm. I want to design my bike. That used to happen when you buy a Bajaj bike or a Hero bike and you go and put subwoofers, you go and put a different one. We used to do that in college. Yes. Now that's coming directly to the OEMs mm -hmm. asking, well, I want this. Hmm. Yeah, Dilip okay. Chabria's uh, used to crea have created a niche, but now all th all the companies are creating their own Dilip Chabria's. <laughs> so okay. when the customization yeah. comes in, the mm -hmm. variety would increase. When the mm -hmm. variety would increase, mm -hmm. 
a company has to connect to that particular variety mm -hmm. possibility mm -hmm. and change themselves and the industry for what is the reason for that Lovely. where you are where you are you are possible to adopt to the market needs mm -hmm. you manage a variety is mm -hmm. not not compromising on a quality mm -hmm. not compromising on the way you are doing at the same tact time mm -hmm. so all that is mix of industry for auto hence great. it's not a fear great so but you know i'll, I'll just stick to this point sure. for, for a while you know uh, uh, in the report that we did i mean me, me and couple of other reporters from my la uh, for the last uh, media organization i remember talking to a lot of parents at that point of time and sure. these parents are not from your metro city these parents are from your tier 3 tier 4 cities they like we i remember we talked to around 400 of them in, sure. in four different cities in india across north and east west like what do you want your children to become no no i want my son or daughter to go this way to go that way i'm like do you have a logic to that pattern like no that is how he or she will get a job so you know where i'm going with this so so sure uh, it's not about responsibility but how do you remove that fear mongering of parents over there because then yes. they only say Oh, uh, so many people did not get you know, and then the you know how media yeah. blows up these yeah. things. So, the, how do you get the message out to those people? I mean, is it your responsibility or is it the industry body's responsibility sure. to take such message out? You know, individual responsibility. I mm -hmm. tell you, very interesting. Mm -hmm. I went through that in the last two weeks. My nephew okay. just cleared a twelfth, okay, and mm -hmm. got very good mark. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. my brother called me telling that hey, I I think we should get it mm -hmm. in the, this cream, that mm -hmm. cream. I said, let him decide. That's Fair. it. And yes. we sat over the dinner table. Mm -hmm. I asked him, Abhi, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. He was very clear what he want to do, which college he wants to get in. Mm -hmm. So gone are the days mm -hmm. when we are we are telling our kids mm -hmm. like this is what you should do. They are coming back telling mm -hmm. that this is I have decided. Mm -hmm. I worked for it. I got some marks, which is mm -hmm. which is relatively good to get into that particular stream. I'm going to go for it. Mm -hmm. And hence the parents have no say. <laughs> oh, parents have no say and, and kids are turning Fair. better and this used to be a trend mm -hmm. across you know when you go to foreign countries mm -hmm. when you look at uh, so did you get a chance to choose your stream when you were here uh, no <laughs> okay. no that, because when back mm -hmm. in then mm -hmm. my dad had a wish that mm -hmm. he would get into it but mm -hmm. then he looked at it and said okay mm -hmm. I didn't because I was clueless mm -hmm. let me be very frank back in mm -hmm. back in you know 2000 when I graduated mm -hmm. even during engineering I was clueless what am I getting into mm -hmm. I found my luck when I got into MBA wow. mm -hmm. and my nephew was already getting his mm -hmm. Laksh, the movie Laksh I'm referring to, <laughs> in the, at the age of 18 when he's getting into engineering stream and he wants very clear what he wants to do. Wow. And that's a trend I've seen across. Mm -hmm. Many students, have, they know what they want to do, mm -hmm. but they want us to mm -hmm. encourage and give a pattern back telling that, yeah, you're doing it. That's Let me see how it goes. And that's, mm -hmm. I see, a huge trend. Mm -hmm. And hence, uh, whether in industry or not, we are all individual working in a corporate sanction. We need to uh, ensure that we talk and give them that, mm -hmm. you know, that freedom to express themselves mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. Not curtail them, say that, hey, no, you have mm -hmm. to decide this is how you're going to get job. Mm -hmm. And the jobs are plenty. Jobs not only in engineering. Engineering at least has mm -hmm. plenty of mm -hmm. jobs. Gone are the days earlier, you were just called as an engineer. Now you're yeah. a data scientist, yes. you're a UX designer, yes. <laughs> you're an engineer, mm -hmm. then you're a testing engineer, mm -hmm. you're a you're developer. Then the holistic nice. entire ecosystem, Systemist. that's where mm -hmm. they know what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And they also know that where do mm -hmm. I want to get in, how do I want to get in. Mm -hmm. uh, that information mm -hmm. is available Lovely. everywhere to this. Lovely. You mentioned about cars, you know, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm very fascinated about what's happening in the last two, three years in terms of what's happening with the market right now. Yeah. How are you folks looking at uh, automated cars, connected cars, the parts that you build for it? How are you looking at the segment oh, coming? That's, that's is, is it a fad? Is it something we read every day? I mean, is it just working out in silos? What is this connected car segment all about? Is it actually a reality? How many years will it take? It will be a reality. Mm -hmm. It will be a reality. Mm -hmm. And at Bosch also, we mm -hmm. call it as mobility, mm -hmm. you know, connected you, mobility. You folks have a division, sir, completely yeah, we dedicated have, to it. We used to call it the automotive. We mm -hmm. renamed itself as connected mobility, connected uh, industry, nice. connected products. Mm -hmm. So we say that the mobility mm -hmm. is going to go huge transformation. Mm -hmm. Everything will be connected. Mm -hmm. Autonomous cars mm -hmm. are going to be reality. We already have a... So funny thing, it is an IoT device. It it's is. Connected or is an IoT device. See, so you go on... Mm -hmm. At a, at a, in a in a Germany mm. airport, you mm. go and park your vehicle. Mm. The parking will automatically assist and it parks in a designated area. Mm. And we worked with OEMs. Mm. We worked on our own company and multiple ecosystem play to make it. And we don't see that as something which is not going to happen. We see that that's going to happen. Oh. We are playing around it, mm. and we see that as that's going to make life mm. easier for customers. And we mm. keep it that mm. as a as a theme, and we call it as simply connected, and we continue to. Do so that. what would be what would you say is the a major setback for the connected ecosystem right now that you want to work on more, like more focus, more fo most focus should go on that. Because you know, a lot of, if you go on, like uh, uh, if you look at the musks of the world, what they're trying to do, and there are a lot of venture capitalists who are on his side, and there's a huge gang of venture capitalists who say, 
no no this is not happening this is just a fad you just create 300 vehicles you'll never break even and all of that what's that one thing technically that you still think need industry needs to come together and work on see this is mm. a journey where mm. you should mm. not decide mm. the fate mm. you should go through the journey allow it to happen the way it should happen mm. at the same time take a consistent view of of looking at if i need to change mm. i change it mm. not have a rigid view of like this mm. is by far has to be xyz mm. coming in it mm. could even be abc mm. coming at the end but okay. we're okay with that okay. and all of us you know there's a mindset change mm. that's required mm. and also an accept mm. that it's not going to mm. be a single player playing it's an ecosystem player mm. collaboration mm. and accepting mm. that you bring in a best part which i don't have ready to join hands and take it further mm. and that networked organization mm. network thinking mm. is the one mm. which uh, i think is going to take it further to me i think not a very uh, high end tech question but do you think connected cars will make sense in india considering none of us follow lanes in this country well right <laughs> <laughs> uh, very interesting we have, i think none of us follow lanes but mm. you you know mm. if you step back mm. humor aside mm. i would also give you a humorous answer mm-hmm. we are mm-hmm. but humor aside it has a direct connect on the mm-hmm. safety mm-hmm. when we see so much of population mm-hmm. i was i was in capital of india yesterday and i mm-hmm. i happened to see the way we drive oh gosh we're all in a fast we're all in a fast lane mm-hmm. but we need to bring in that discipline yeah. and at least connected cars will bring in that discipline not the human beings i like the way <laughs> <laughs> i like the way also you know moving forward uh, on a personal note uh, i've also read about I read about something you wrote on LinkedIn uh, I think a year back or something uh, about you creating a startup inside a large enterprise yeah. what is this story all about so just okay. give me a brief idea again as i said mm-hmm. fail fast fail cheap mm-hmm. is a philosophy our president mm-hmm. in india mm-hmm. had decided to create few stop mm-hmm. startups mm-hmm. industry for auto smart city mm-hmm. agriculture mm-hmm. give them this is use. inside the inside of, it's entrepreneurship entrepreneurship okay. so you allow employees to come up with the idea so you know we will fund you with this idea go ahead with this yep. idea yep there are multiple ways to do okay. it you say that I took on a mm-hmm. on a trend which Bosch was already investing. Bosch okay. at a global level, connected mm-hmm. industry, industry for mm-hmm. I took that I decided I'll mm-hmm. build it for emerging market. Mm-hmm. Went ahead, created a business plan. Mm-hmm. Every three months you have to go and submit mm-hmm. to the board. Mm-hmm. You'll get beaten up because you're not not understanding mm-hmm. your customer journeys. You're not your funding. All that it's mm-hmm. a true startup mm-hmm. where the where mm-hmm. the venture capitalists or management mm-hmm. members will ask you tough questions. Mm-hmm. You have to be ready for it. Yeah. Sometimes you'll have a pat on back link that wow you got such a great business. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're like oh you're not doing that mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. See what you can do. Mm-hmm. It's a great learning for two years and resulted in a business unit from first of Germany. Are you serious? Yep. Wow. We are a business unit now. The managing entire emerging market India. Turkey, mm-hmm. Mexico, and ASEAN countries. So it was a startup within a large enterprise. A, a two years it took, and if you're not moved mm-hmm. from two year to a, a business unit, then there's fundamentally something wrong, and better not to continue. But we. So then let we, me ask you: When do you think is the right time for a for a startup to approach a VC? <laughs> when it depends on what you want to do. A scale a VC. I would say don't approach a VC for funding alone. Approach a VC if you can bring along the experience. How how would it help you to scale it up? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's Fair the right. Uh, there's no right or wrong. You can either mm-hmm. approach first day if you get Ratan <laughs> Ratan Tata kind of a VC, or if you get a VC like our president Vijay, the first day itself you need to have a VC on the board. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, to that point, no. The, I was going through a report. Uh, we're talking to the CEO of uh, an edtech platform called okay. Coursera. A week back, we interviewed yeah, okay. the CEO. Okay, yeah. He mentioned a very critical uh, point to me uh, during that live interview where he said, you know, uh, we, we were talking about reskilling. I mean, yeah. if you look at the way industry has looked at reskilling in the last 2 or 3 years i mean i kind of little funny i mean why suddenly everybody is talking about reskilling they should have been there it was happening on on, yeah. on a very mundane level 3 or 4 years back yeah. but there's one point uh, there's one pointer which stood out on the interview it said when i talk, asked him about reskilling he said from india the ratio is 70% men who are happy to do a new course or you know redo their skill sets all together there are only 30% or 25% women who do that have you seen that trend like few women going for reskilling courses no okay so i'm i'm surprised with the data at least in my experience okay i've seen the other way around because it's the same uh, the same fields that you talk no, about no, because the same fields yeah i've seen okay. the other way around i've wow. seen women who have taken sabbatical mm-hmm. for for a happy reason mm-hmm. have come back and with a new energy new rigor mm-hmm. wanting to do love in my team itself mm-hmm. people have gone and they've been they've, they've mm-hmm. gone on a family way come back mm-hmm. and telling that hey lokesh mm-hmm. let me know what i can do and they've reskilled mm-hmm. very beautifully mm-hmm. onto new and they've taken up a new responsibilities mm-hmm. so i i don't see that trend in the industry at least mm-hmm. 
in my industry, at least in my team at least. Okay. But I'm surprised if that number is true. I don't know Fair. the sample size though. Fair. But I want it to be different. Mm -hmm. And all of us need to risk it. Mm -hmm. Let me be frank. In India, we, yeah, lack that. we lack that in India. We don't want to venture into something because we want a very secure job of Bang. 9 to yes. 5, go yes. back yes. and relax. Yep. Yep. And we decide we retire. We yep. think that yeah, I've arrived this particular well, age. We need to change that. So, so, that, so, so tell yeah. me something, uh, uh, again on a personal note, uh, with especially you in the perspective, uh, there are a lot of, we, when we talk about reskilling, I mean generally we talk about reskilling on camera, on yep. whatever shows, and even when we write, it's all about a certain type of employee, I mean the employees have been there in the first 5 years or 4 years, or people have been there for 10 years in quality testing jobs who want to reskill. What about reskilling of people at your level? Do you do that personally? Have you seen the CEOs, the CIOs, the CTOs, the CDOs have that group of people looked at reskilling in a way? Have you looked at reskilling in a way? Yeah. Can I answer it with humor? Yes. The fat is always in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you see, you know, everyone, yeah. all of us will focus when mm. you want to get lean. Mm. We focus on the fat, which is around tummy. That's a middle <laughs> management. So people at a middle management, it's high time okay. that they look at it. Mm. Only paranoid mm. survives. You need to start getting fit. The fit in that case mm. is reskilling. You need to know where is the trend happening and you need for, for a middle management or a senior management it's most important because you're getting millennials who are walking in with a different set of attributes, with a different kind of attitude, with a different kind of curiosity and their questions are completely, if you want to manage, which you will never be able to manage, you need to include them, that inclusive leadership requires you to be fit. Love and that. that inclusive leadership is most important that I see a big gap in Indian management as I see. Lovely. And if you master that art of inclusive leadership, uh, you're, you're done. You're done for the life. You'll reach heights very, very faster. Because all about these guys come in and they don't want. Mm -hmm. Gone are the days when you expect them to come to office at 8.30, swipe in and sit in front of a computer mm -hmm. till 6 o'clock and go out. Mm -hmm. Uh, for them, time is not for them. Mm -hmm. What am I doing? Is it what value as it add, is it adding into the? Video? They want to know everything. Mm -hmm. They want to know what's the vision mm -hmm. of a company, what's the strategy, strategy, what is that? Why the what, what and why is very high. So uh, for a middle management mm -hmm. who are uh, at, at my level, mm -hmm. if I could use the word, mm -hmm. uh, you need to become very fit, uh, very early. Otherwise, you won't survive. You know, okay, you know, the very few uh, leaders who have actually gone on camera to uh, the media talked about reskilling. Of leaders, we never talk about that. Reskilling is always about a certain d degree of individuals, a certain type of individuals. So it's know. easy to point at someone like this is what you need to know. Let's look at ourselves and Absolutely. achieve, and that's what's required. Absolutely, it was a pleasure talking to you. I mean, from your journey to choosing something which you didn't want to do, but being happy about it, finding a thing. It was a lovely, great Thank conversation. So Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.